everyone, I'm here at the Snapdragon Elite Festival. The world of Snapdragon is there, so let me quickly take you inside and show you what all is powered by Snapdragon. But more than that, I'm going to talk to someone really special at Snapdragon and show you what is coming in 2025 and what all they're powering. We live in a world where technology is driving everything, quite literally. Especially the automobiles we are driving today, be it four-wheelers or the two-wheelers, are driven by technology. And going forward, it will be technology takeover completely. We'll have smart cars, cars that talk to us, and so much more happening. And for that, I have a very special guest, Nakul from Qualcomm. So thank you so much for joining, Nakul. Very nice and, to meet you. Uh, Lovely office, we'll be soon seeing a lot of people here and I'm lucky to be in the office before anybody moved in. Absolutely, very excited to have this <laughs> office. Well, the exciting things are happening at your end and especially in the automotive field. We've seen so many new things and with the AI, a lot of things are changing, especially in automobile. If you could give us a glimpse of what is happening. You know, the car for us has become a very interesting product because I equate it to a digital lifestyle product. The car has... Uh, uh, become a software product. I think one of the big changes that happened was as EVs became uh, the norm, everybody wanted to have an EV, the complexity of the, of, the, of the combustion engine powertrain wasn't something a lot of new players had to go deal with. And you can see this in cars, you can see this in two-wheelers. But what that also did was it brought about this uh, concept of how do you make this a software product? Mm. How do you actually bring, it, bring an ecosystem that you have around you in the home, in the office, on your person. What does that look and feel like when you are inside the car? Now the car is a very different type of product because it is a personal product, but not quite because your family can also use it. Uh, you don't own it. Uh, you, you, you know there is a there is a second life to a car. It has a wide variety of use cases from commercial to personal to fleets, etc. So the opportunity and the challenge for the auto industry is how do you build a product? with software in mind, with so many different use cases. For us, that was a fantastic opportunity because first of all, you had to redefine what the platform uh, had to go to. It had to be relevant for 10 plus years. So you had to imagine what, what capabilities you might need to predict for, plan for. And you asked about AI. AI has been such a uh, you know, such an interesting intersection point because, you know, we, we do a lot of different products for the car. We've been doing driver assistance for a long time, automated driving. AI is central to all of that. But as you bring Gen AI into the vehicle yeah. and you've seen, uh, you know, voice assistants have become so much more intelligent as LNMs have become relevant, changes the experience completely. So for us, the car is kind of this, uh, this, this epitome of how do you... Uh, take a digital lifestyle product mm -hmm. uh, and introduce so many different facets that are not similar to the home or the enterprise or the office. It's a very different product. That's, I think, has been a tremendous learning for us. Very, very enjoyable experience. Frankly. It's not just about <coughs> the right uh, software experience, of course, but you are the ones who are powering it all with yeah. your chips. How does that go? <coughs> because, you know, uh, from building for smartphones to building for cars, as yeah. you mentioned, the longevity of that car is not just like a smartphone. Yeah. You don't change it every two years. Yeah. So how do you address that situation? You know, so for us as a tech company, uh, the first thing that we think about is how do we make our technology relevant to the end product as it might appear in the future, mm -hmm. not necessarily appear in the present. And uh, the one big leap that we had to make was uh, to take advantage of the consumer ecosystem that we are part of. We do a lot of consumer IP, we do it yeah. every year. It requires us to move very fast. But then uh, start to internalize what does it mean to live in the automotive space, which is not the consumer space. It is for a consumer, but the quality, the reliability, the safety, the life cycles, the complexity of the supply chain. And we uh, invested, we were patient, we uh, changed the way that we architected our platforms. We created something that allowed us to essentially meld the best of both worlds. And ultimately, the recipe that we reached was, we want to be very relevant to the auto industry as a, at, a, at a global footprint level. So we have to help redefine what the next generation car looks like. What is that architecture that, uh, uh, that an automaker is gonna be building on? And that's what we did. So we started the journey, you know, 
10 plus years ago, but over the last five years, we really internalized what changes we had to make. And we've become the de facto platform in the industry in terms of uh, everybody, you know, ecosystem partners, the Googles and the Amazons, uh, the Chinese, uh, various different types of companies from HMI companies like Epic to, you know, CRM companies like Salesforce, the, the tier one ecosystem. And then, of course, all of our OEM customers. Yeah. It's been, it's been a pretty rewarding uh, last few years. So when you mentioned about the future of technologies and you're building for the future, I personally got a glimpse of two future products that I got to witness on a global level and they're putting India on the global stage. And I'm proud that we're both powered by Indian brands and even prouder that it's done by you guys. One was, of course, the drop that happened, which is the Royal Enfield's first EV. Yeah. And that's the Flying Flea. And the other one, just recently, the Mahindra Unlimited India event. Yes. Which was again, I got a glimpse of two of the most sophisticated technology marvels, I would say, in terms of you know automotive history. And these are giant leaps what we've seen by Indian manufacturers. The flying clears, of course, what's gonna set the path for future two-wheeler electric mo mobility. And of course, then we saw Mahindra's two electric cars. How is uh, Snapdragon driving these? So, you know, for us, uh, as I mentioned, when we think about uh, a product that is digital. The first thing that is important to us is to help redefine for our customers what experience they want to bring uh, to the consumer that they're trying to target. And so I, uh, you know, I compare it to a canvas and you want to be able to provide a lot of tools, hardware tools, software tools, ecosystem tools, and provide a lot of examples of experiences that are possible and then get out of the way. Because you kind of have to, you know, and both Mahindra and uh, Royal Enfield are such iconic brands Absolutely. in terms of who they are catering to, they are redefining themselves, electrification yeah. is coming in. So they are in this window of time where they have to have a tremendous amount of freedom to figure out who do they want to be, what do they want to go look like. We take pride in the fact that we provide a lot of flexibility in how our platforms are defined. So the Snapdragon digital chassis, which is the portfolio mm -hmm. that we build for automotive, is designed for our customers uh, to really be able to shape the platform as they wish to. I spent some time with Rajesh uh, earlier this week, oh, wow. actually, uh, uh, you know, and I was in Carnivale looking at uh, uh, the Mahindra vehicles. Really, really very impressive. Very I mean, impressive. For that I, amount of money. I, I, yeah, I mean, not just the price point, but, you know, it is true to the look and feel. Exactly. It is a, it Everybody is a product, a digital it. product. So, yeah. super impressive for the first time that uh, a product like this has been announced. And then Royal Enfield, of course, we are all very proud of because it's something that we've all grown up and you can yeah. see. That product category changing, it's a global yeah. footprint. Yeah. We are very proud to be part of that. And I think these are two examples in India. Yeah. But, you know, we are doing this, I do this at a global level wow. every day. It really is, uh, you know, it's a privilege to be part of so many different iconic companies who have been around in our lives for so long and to actually be able to help shape what their products look like. So uh, I, think, I think it's uh, uh, really interesting part of the business. It is much more than tech. It is of much course. more than, uh, you know, software, etc. It really is kind of something that uh, you can start to see. And it, and I think the other piece, it's a global business. Yeah. The products that we build or that are part of show up, uh, you know, all over the world. So I think after this interaction, I want to do like a day with you so <laughs> I can see a lot of technology that yes. I'm keen on seeing what is the next of auto and tech. Yeah. Now we've seen great strides by Snapdragon in 2024. Yeah. What's up? and what's in for us in 2025? So I think uh, there is a lot of competition now of in course. the auto industry. And uh, you know, all of the questions that I get asked are around, tell us what it is that you are seeing that's going to allow us to be able to be nimble, be agile, uh, look ahead. AI, for example, is going to become part of uh, every cockpit. Uh, one, one area that we've been spending a lot of time on is how do you bring a combination of uh, vision models and large language models into mm -hmm. the cockpit. One thing that is very unique about the car is that it is surrounded by a ton of sensors, yeah. all types of data. Uh, the environment around the car is the richest environment that you can potentially find. And when you feed that in as an input into AI, the experiences that you can create are very rich. So we look at the, the, the camera, for example, as something that serves two purposes. Uh, help the car navigate, drive, yeah. be safe, but then also provide to the driver to the occupants uh, an improved uh, elevated experience True. because you are now able to see a whole lot more. 
We will see a lot of that at CES. We are going to be uh, making a lot of uh, announcements around well, partnerships. In that I am finally space. excited about CES now. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm very happy to know that you'll be there and yeah. uh, you know, with the car business, seeing is believing. Absolutely. I think, I think the other piece that we are very proud of is we've created the platform that people look at and they say, I want to be part of that platform because it helps me differentiate my product. It helps me bring my experiences to life. Mm -hmm. And we see more and more of that across a very wide variety of ecosystems from, you know, we partner with JP Morgan on payments. We partner with Salesforce, as I mentioned. Uh, we are partnering with HMI companies, large uh, tech ecosystems. And because there is so much of complexity in the car platform, for you to be able to extract the most value, you have to partner very broadly. Of course. So I think we'll see, be seeing a combination of uh, those two. I think the other thing I'm looking forward to is we're going to be launching uh, our ARAS stack uh, globally next year with BMW. Lovely. So that is going to be something that uh, is going to happen second half of next year. I'm really excited about that. BMW is going to get a lot more smarter now. <laughs> we are uh, very, very proud of the partnership. With them. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I think yeah. I'm really keen to visit you again at CES and talk to you even more. Thank you. Very nice Thank to you meet so you. much. Pleasure.